today's video, I just want to very briefly talk about the main differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So these two diagrams here show you a very simplified version of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. If we look at the internal structures, they're very similar. We have this DNA strand here in both of them. We have ribosomes dotted throughout the cytoplasm. And we have this circular DNA, which is also known as a plasmid. I want you to look at the outer surfaces, and this is where we have the key differences between both types of bacteria. The gram-positive bacteria just have a cell membrane and a cell wall which is made from peptidoglycan. And then they have this periplasmic space which just separates the two. Peptidoglycan is what the cell wall is made from, and it's just a combination of sugar and amino acids, and it forms a meshwork like this. In gram-positive bacteria, this layer is very, very thick. In gram-negative, we have this cell membrane, we have the cell wall made from peptidoglycan, but it's much thinner in comparison. We have two periplasmic spaces, and then we have an outer membrane, which is made from liposaccharide. So gram-positive doesn't have this additional layer, the outer layer is just the cell wall. However, gram-negative has an outer membrane made from liposaccharide. The reason why this is important is because when you have a sample of bacteria and you want to know which antibiotic to use, the antibiotics all have a different mechanism of action. So one antibiotic which works on gram-positive bacteria might not work on the gram-negative bacteria because of this difference in their structures. So this is why it's very important to know the type of bacteria that you are treating and whether it's gram-positive or gram-negative. So an example of gram-positive is Clostridium. An example of gram-negative is Helicobacter. I'll talk about this staining technique as well, which um, I don't want to go into too much detail about, but I'm going to use this video sample here. I'm going to explain what's going on. First, what he's going to do is take his bacterial sample and spread it across the microscopic slide and then heat the bacteria in place just by dragging the slide over the flame very lightly and then the bacteria gets fixed in position. And then he's gonna place this liquid over the slide which is called crystal violet and it's got this purple color. Then he's gonna wash off this crystal violet after leaving it on for a minute. Then he's going to place this grams iodine on it. So it's basically like an iodine solution which is going to be placed on the sample and left for a minute and then it's washed off. Now the gram stain or the purple stain color is going to be in the cell membrane and peptidoglycan layer in both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. But now we're going to wash away the gram stain in gram negative bacteria by using ethanol. So what ethanol does is it dissolves the outer membrane and since the peptidoglycan cell wall is so thin this is going to get dissolved away. So essentially the purple stain gets removed as well. However in gram positive bacteria since the cell wall is so thick the stain remains in gram positive. That's why the gram positive stain purple. Finally, we can stain gram-negative bacteria using safranin, which stains the gram-negative bacteria in a reddish-pinkish color. So this safranin does not stain gram-positive bacteria, it only stains gram-negative bacteria. So the overall effect of the gram-staining technique on both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, it has this final appearance in the microscope image. So lastly, just to end the video, I want to make a few final points on the differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Uh, I've already mentioned the first three points in terms of the gram-staining and the differences in the membrane structure. The fourth point is that gram-positive bacteria have tachoic acid and gram-negative bacteria do not. Tachoic acid is a glycopolymer and is responsible for bacterial cell division and it also helps to maintain the shape. And the final difference is that there is very little liposaccharide content in gram-positive bacteria and there is a much higher content of liposaccharide in gram-negative bacteria.